obsession of society have been asking whether former First Lady and flag bearer of the National Democratic Party, Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings, will still contest the presidency in the light of her husband's death. General Secretary of the National Democratic Party, Alaji Mohamed Frimpong, uh, joins us uh, with more on this particular issue. But first, listen to former National Security Advisor, Brigadier General Nunu Mensah, asking former First Lady, Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings, and the flag bearer of the NDP, uh, to, as a sign of respect for her dead husband, withdraw from this year's presidential race. He spoke to my colleague, Kwesi Parker-Wilson. If I were here, I would not stand. You would not stand? No, if I were here. You won't proceed with the ambition of doing that? I, I think that if she was asked me, I would say, Madam, it's okay, call it off. You know, she should as, a respect, the as a respect. To this yes, as a respect to your, your husband, because I asked President Rawlings, Rawlings, Mr. President, your, your daughter is standing for the NDC at Ozuklote. Yeah. You're going to vote for Mama as president. Your wife is also standing. So which one of them were you going to vote for? I asked him, he didn't answer me. You put in a very awkward position. The daughter is standing for the NDC. The husband is standing on his own right. So President elect which who should he for should he, should he vote for? The wife or the or the, the, the daughter's party. So he was party. going to be in a difficult position. It is. I asked, he didn't answer me, answer the question. So the wife should save him from that embarrassment by pulling out. Alaji Mohamed Frimpong is General Secretary of the NDP. He joins me in studio. So you had uh, Brigadier General Nunu Mensa there. Your reaction to what he said? Thank you very much uh, and good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, in the first place, uh, General Nunu Mensa's statement or declaration it's not supported in any way, because we, if he says, uh, based on tradition, uh, we would say that uh, there's no tradition that links uh, political activity, and for that matter, standing as a, presiden a presidential election, you know, uh, so that if a spouse is, uh, I mean, uh, at the demise of a spouse, then it means the other uh, should, you know, maybe step aside uh, as a mark of respect or a sign of, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, a sign of respect in the memory of uh, their spouse. So that is it. I mean, I think the constitution is clear. If we look at uh, the constitution, uh, chieftaincy, which is the very center of tradition, Mm. is uh, very well insulated, you know, in matters of governance. So that is one. And all the world over, you know, spouses have supported uh, one another in very noble deeds. I mean, if you uh, take a recent, you know, let's say, a demise of uh, parliamentarians and what have you, mm. it is their spouses that have been the first choice. I mean, the first point of call who have come you know, to lift up, you know, the kind works or the noble deed, you know, of their counterparts in making sure that at least um, the community where they live uh, still have the benefit of the good works of their, I mean, their uh, deceased spouses. So that is one. It is, it is unfounded. I would say that General Nunes Mensah's um, uh, suggestion is, is tongue in cheek. You know, maybe he would have wished to say this long ago, even before the demise of, of the president. Mm -hmm. He only took the occasion uh, of the demise of President, president uh, Rollins, you know, to make his case. Mm. I'll call it a wishful uh, thinking of a detractor, okay. you know. So, uh, as a matter of fact, and it is indeed the spouse who must, you know, live and fulfill what I call the testament, the political testament that uh, uh, Flight Lieutenant Rollins had, had left, right. you know. Uh, he is uh, a possession of the nation, I mean. And um, uh, the, 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 the former First Lady has supported, uh, you know, President Rollins in whatever way, you know, that made him, you know, I mean, so much cherished. By, we'll come by, back by, to by, how by, it, or, it, we'll come back yeah. to how it will impact on your campaign proper. But I just heard you say that yeah. he is the possession of the nation. That's right. That is, he's the, the, the property of the state. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. what do you make of the controversy surrounding? 
where he ought to be buried. There are those who say that he's a royal, he comes from Anlo, he must be buried there, and others who argue that, no, he is a former commander of the armed forces, he must be buried at the military cemetery, especially because he's a soldier. What, what do you make of well, the controversy uh, that? Well, to begin with this, let's uh, praise the, the president of the nation, that's Nana Kufuado, for, as a matter of fact, taking it up and saying that, as a statesman, you know, his funeral, burial, and everything associated with sending him off is, you know, uh, the, duty of, the duty of the state. Mm. You know, so we have also had, I mean, the NDC also making a claim. The issue is that um, if it were not even for the state or the president to have made that declaration, mm. one would have asked that, you know, probably why did the president not, mm. you know, state uh, how the state was going to give the former president a, a fitting send off. I mean, between a party, a political party, which, which, which might not be totally national in character and, and the state, you know, uh, between the two, of course, it's, it's, it's more befitting for the state to undertake to send the former president off in a more dignified way rather than, you know, on partisanship, you know, which will be the NDC. So that is one. And then two, I mean, I think the president has made it clear that, of course, the wish of the family will be taken into consideration. Mm. So, I mean, why the argument about whether, uh, you know, whether the former president was a royal and uh, must be buried maybe in his hometown mm. or within the military uh, 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 estate, I mean, square or whatever, you know, that, for me, does not arise at all. The most important thing is that he must first be accorded that dignity he deserves as a statesman and, uh, you know, not even to look at his burial and funeral service, you know, in a partisan way, you know, because seriously, the vision that he came to live for uh, has, 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 nothing, has nothing to do with partisanship, you know. I mean, he's, 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 he had an impassioned vision. Uh, for which this uh, Fourth Republic had lived for for 28 years. All right, let's yeah. go back to the issue about um, the suggestions for Nana Kunedo and Jamal Rawlings to withdraw from the race. We know Nana Kunedo and Jamal Rawlings to be very, you know, aggressive, very tough talking. Um, she doesn't back down easily, um, but she is human. She is grieving, you know, the death of her husband. Um, so these suggestions for her to withdraw, um, there are split opinions on it. But how is that going to affect your campaign? The fact that she has lost her husband, she's grieving, how will that affect the NDP's campaign? Well, thank you very much. I think um, that is a known fact that the shock and the disbelief of the demise of the first president affected everybody. Certainly, the family will be the most hit. Uh, it will take some time, at least everybody will come to terms with whatever has happened. But the issue of you know, having to withdraw, and that will be in a sign of uh, fond memory, respect, or whatever, you know, uh, lies neither here nor there. Okay. The issue is that, as a matter of fact, um, she, had, she herself has been I mean, a, state, a statesman as well. And the, 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 the point is that, uh, if there is any time mm. ever for her to, uh, let's say, lift up the, what I call the political testament of her spouse, then it is now. Mm. As far as we are concerned in the party, we are working. Mm. We are doing all we can. So you're campaigning? Are you, are you uh, yes, I mean, apart from the fact that, you know, the, I mean, we are all observing the seven-day mm. uh, halt in political activities. Mm. You know that is quite natural. Uh, so when will Nana Kunedu hit the campaign trail? Uh, even if she doesn't do so, we have you know party na national executive uh, individuals who were so standing. It's for not her. likely for us to see her hit the campaign well, trail anytime possible. soon. Well, it's possible. It's possible. 
Why not? It's possible. We have about 21 days to the election. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Even That's if, three weeks. Yes, even if it's a day. And if even if she doesn't at all, we're still uh, standing for her. How is the party going to prosecute its agenda of campaigning for votes uh, to win the election we, we if a, the flag bearer is not at the forefront of well, the campaign? Well, the flag bearer does not necessarily have to uh, be everywhere. I mean, I don't think there's any requirement for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it is us uh, as neck, you know, who will be doing. You what don't think that it is, is, is it's, it's uh, necessary for her to be visible on it, the campaign? It will have been a plus, but, you know, she is highly visible already, very marketable. Mm -hmm. You don't need, you know, to say that this is, you don't need to introduce her anywhere. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, her, post, I mean, her, her, her posters alone are mm -hmm. sufficient, mm -hmm. you know, and that is exactly what we are doing. We are sending her posters all over. As a matter of fact, there are communities who are even asking, just bring her poster. And that is exactly what we're doing. Mm. Fortunately, I mean, that is why uh, we, you know, had to put her up once more as a flag bearer, you know, because of her visibility and the enormous work that she had done for this country. Okay, so, be so we, that we as it no may, problem. we're about three weeks to the election. Exactly. Um, even though a lot of the parties have suspended their campaigns just for seven days, yes. um, and still that we're all looking ahead to the elections. Exactly. What are, what's the NDP's chances? Well, uh, as for chances, any competitor, you know, uh, in any race is very hopeful. Right. We are very hopeful. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are very happy that even though uh, our participation this year had come with this grief that we are all going through, uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is very well with us. Well with us that, you know, uh, when it comes to still propagating the ideals, you know, you know the whole uh, the entire nation uh, is confronted with what I call a double-ended political puzzle, you know, that... Uh, uh, our inspirer had left as uh, the former president. You know, we are happy that at least we are engaged, you know, in this whole uh, process, mm. you know, to further propagate, you know, the ideals, you know, of uh, the former president, you know, as uh, a party that he has inspired. Right. I mean, definitely we draw a lot of inspiration, you know, from his vision. All and, right. and, and we really don't mind even right. if uh, the flag bearer you know, does not show up okay. on, on, on stages. Okay, uh, we'll have to wrap up the conversation okay. here. But thank you so much. Okay. That was Elijah Frimpong. He's a general secretary of the NDP. You're still watching Election Brief.